uh, loud party calls in the last month, none of which were repeat calls to any particular areas. They were scattered in locations all around the North End. So I think that covers that for now. Stephen, would it be okay briefly to talk about the trash meeting? Sure. Okay. okay. Thanks. Stephen and I attended a trash meeting. Um, it was at the Beacon Hill Civic Association. Um, there were representatives from the North End, Stephen and I, um, Beacon Hill itself, and Chinatown. The bottom line is, you may already know about the trash survey that was put up very kindly by Matt Conti on NorthEndWaterfront.com back in December. Uh, the Beacon Hill Civic Association put up a trash survey of their own, but theirs was over three months from December to Jan December through March. 532 respondents um, or people responded to the survey. 65% of those that responded preferred the preferred, uh, I believe it was two days a week for trash pickup and two days a week of recycling. And of course, the other 35% um, prefer the current policy, which is just like what we have in the North End. Three days a week, trash pick up Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, with one day of recycling. Bottom line is Beacon Hill residents are strongly, it seems, strongly in favor of same-day trash pickup. So putting out the trash starting at 6 a.m., the day that it's picked up, all the way up until 9 a.m., rather than what the policy is in the North End, which is as early as 5 p.m. the day before the pickup, all the way up to 7 a.m. the morning of the pickup. <clears throat> Next steps include Chinatown, putting, implementing their own survey, um, probably through Survey Monkey or whatever that may be called online, getting the results just like we did and just like Beacon Hill residents did, and then we are all going to meet together so that we can arrive at some type of consens consensus. And then, of course, take the results, all the aggregate results from all the neighborhoods take that to the appropriate officials at City Hall, et cetera, et cetera, um, which might take a little time, but it will be done. And hopefully things can change when it is time for the new trash companies contracts, the, the contracts to be, um, you know, the bidding process will start again before you know it. And a lot of people do have a lot of complaints about capital, myself included. I don't think they, I think they do a less than ideal job. So stay tuned. I will be uh, continue to be as actively involved in that as I can. Sure. Uh, just from uh, walking around the neighborhood, uh, uh, Cooper Street, for example, today's Mayhem, uh, there's garbage left over where they take the garbage and they, they leave that for it behind. Part of the issue being the uh, amount of people that are picking through the garbage in the North End. You know, if we don't put a stop to that, those broken garbage bags are going to be everywhere. And one thing, word of caution, when we talk about other neighborhoods, you know, we're talking about, for example, Beacon Hill compared to the North End compared to Chinatown. We really have different. Uh, the apartments in the North End are a lot smaller than the apartments in Beacon Hill. The amount of people that live in single family homes in, the, in Beacon Hill is much greater than the people that live in single family homes in the North End. Uh, the amount of buildings that have uh, uh, full uh, services where somebody maintains them, there's a place to put the garbage barrels, they have a network of back alleys. We don't have any of that in the North End. So, although it may apply to, you know, changes may be uh, warranted in, in Beacon Hill, uh, we're talking about different uh, set of circumstances. The apartments are very small here. Nobody wants to live with their garbage. And the other part that we need to keep on remembering that this is a prelude to government cutting down services and keeping the cost up and actually increasing the cost right now because I don't know if anybody's aware but the mayor had the, the uh, he's going to leave us a little courtesy before he leaves of now we have to have our apartments inspected by the city at a fee in order to be able to rent them. Okay, so that's another thing. We have to have our apartments now inspected, which is another tax on the landlord who owns property who's already paying top dollar taxes. So we're going to get less services, more scrutiny. Okay, it's kind of like we're becoming a somewhat of a totalitarian city government. Now they want to know what you have in your apartments, how much money you're making in your apartments, who are you renting them to, what condition they're in, you know, in addition to high taxes. In addition to lobbying, which is what this is, all these little meetings are lobbying for less services. Okay, that's my point of view, but I figure that since we're talking about what other people think, that's what I think. Stephen, if I might add real quick, and George, thanks for bringing that up just real quick. One thing I failed to include in my public safety update. Latifa Ali, who is a community service liaison with the Inspectional Services Department for the City of Boston, she made an appearance pretty last minute, so I give her a lot of credit for showing up. She was at the public safety meeting. And she did hand out some brochures, including something in regards to what George just mentioned. Um, back in December, the Boston City Council approved an amendment or amendments to the rental ordinance. 
requiring the registration of all Boston's private rental units and inspection of so-called non-exempt rental units every five years, like George said. There actually will be a free seminar June 20th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at the ISD offices at 1010 Mass Avenue, fifth floor. Limited space is available. You can RSVP by calling 617-961-3297. So it's a free landlord seminar in regards to that new ordinance that will be going into effect. She also handed out a brochure about code enforcement, which we know will be a big issue, especially when it comes to trash. And another brochure, once again, about requirements for rental units for the registration and inspection process. So I'll leave this right here. I just happen to have my copy if anyone wants to take a look. It was be a copy in the paper tomorrow. But, but to suggest again, you know, I mean, just on the fact, this is probably coming out of the issues that we had with, uh, you know, we talked about, when, when we have a conversation with a government, our government immediately puts it on us, okay? So we talked about loud parties and, 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 and people causing trouble, and it immediately goes to the landlord. The landlord is at fault, let's see how we can scrutinize the landlord. So when, when we come up with these things and they scrutinize the landlord, they figure out another way to get out of the pocket of the landlord, okay? Which, Personally, I'm completely against. I'm a landlord, and I pay already too many, you know, we pay way too much, and we get very little. I mean, so instead of the city coming up with a solution and, and, and saying, you know what, we're not going to put it on the landlords today, we're not going to put it on the people that live in the city. We're going to do the right thing and carry out our duties the way they're supposed to, and then we can approach people to fix the problem. What they like to do is they like not to fix the problem. They like to put the problem on our laps again, and after we have the problem on our laps, they want to tell us how much more is going to cost us to fix the problem. Okay, so that's something that I find very disturbing in a, in a time in history where everything is more expensive, where we all have this money in our pocket, okay? Why is it that the landlord is responsible for the wrongdoing of others? And why is it that the city has to make, needs to move in with us now to find out what our properties are looking like? We're all providing the law. Enough is enough. That's my point of view. But that's something to watch, watch about. We'll get together as neighbors. We complain to the city. Immediately they turn it around and they put it on us. And we, what we need to do is we've got to face them and say, no, 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 it's on you. You are providing the service. Provide the service that is required for the funds that you're already collecting. Once you complete those obligations, maybe we can talk about changing services. But, you know, that's, you know, talk about uh, resident parking. We still have no signs. It's been over a year. Why don't we have signs? Because they love the tickets. And if you allow people who are residents to park in, in visitor parking, that's less tickets you can give up. So it's not an equation that they want to work out. So, it's all, you know, ribbons and bows and with a price tag. So I, I just make that. You know what I feel is though that the not then isn't together on a lot of issues, so you don't have enough power when you go to City Hall and argue the point. Yeah, and I think that, you that's know what, we collect a lot of money for them, you know, we're right here, we're not going anywhere. I was at the Seaport District the other day, the streets are impeccable, the garbage bottles are empty, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, people can say whatever they want. They have you money, the local businesses, local residents are not paying extra to have the streets clean when they already pay for the streets clean. Uh, that comes Everybody? out of Massport, Judge. Huh? That comes out of Massport. It's Massport. The, the Seaport District all comes out of Massport. Yeah. All those I'm buildings there, and all, all that comes out of, all yeah. the clean yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we have... Yeah. Although we discussed the Massport yeah. issue in a couple of weeks, and um, I'm I think we'll move on with the agenda. Uh, I think I'm going to move on with the agenda. Okay. Thank you, guys. I love you all. Um, can I just get the Greenway Committee? Oh, Yep, got it. All right, so uh, well, we're joined tonight with Amy Dwyer of the Greenway. Yes, Amy, I'm sorry, Amy Dwyer from the Greenway. Um, so thanks for, thanks for coming tonight. Well, first, uh, this isn't quite the Greenway, but uh, I just thought it was important to recognize that uh, the work done by the Beautification Committee in Fontenay uh, with Cross Street and around the Tony DeMarco statue that they did some plannings over the weekend, of which our president uh, was a part of. So I think it looks great. Thanks for doing that. Um, some certain Greenway issues. Uh, the umbrellas are still coming. We they were supposed to come, I think, this month, but uh, just due to certain uh, uh, planning aspects and things like that, we, we should expect them by July, but hopefully sooner. The same thing with the trees. We've we've uh, haven't been available for a little bit of a time, and we're waiting for the right time to plant them. Uh, we, we're going to put them in within a week, but at least this month, so that'll be good. Uh, skateboarding always continues to be addressed. We've been adding deterrents throughout this uh, this year and last. We, we've allocated almost fifteen to $20,000 to 
dedicated to, uh, to these deterrents and recognizing spots that uh, skateboarders continue to ruin, and hopefully we can lower that as time goes on. Um, an issue within the North End, but also because of the park's board of the North End, is the dog waste and how people aren't quite disposing of it properly. I'm hoping to partner with uh, Matt Conti in assembling a sort of survey that we did that was similar to the trash one to kind of address a uh, question and certain uh, answers that we can see as to how we can, can properly solve this issue, hopefully get roughs input to the neighborhood uh, dog, responsible dog owners, and uh, to figure out what we need to do in the North End Parks, but also the North End generally to see how we can solve that, that problem. <clears throat> Some events that are ongoing, of course the food trucks are still here. We have the Greenway Open Market and the Boston Public Market. They're both open um, throughout the summer. The open market is on Saturdays, the public market is Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm sure by now people have seen the Flash Forward Festival of Photography around here um, on Surface Road between High and Commercial. That will continue to exist all summer. Um, and then we also have a series of Get Fit programs. We have Cross Bay, or CrossFit Back Bay. That's in the North End Parks. It's every Wednesday in June from 6 to 7. You have to RSVP, but that's free. A good morning yoga and chi gun class. Stephen, I guess, is that the one you and I are going to? Yes. <laughs> That's uh, led by um, Susan Browning, who's the founder of Health Thyself. That's every Wednesday in June, uh, from June to mid September, from 8 to 8 45 a.m. That's in the Wharf District Parks. And then we also have a waterfront yoga, which is Wednesday evenings in June, um, from June until September, from 6 30 to 7 30, down by the Wharf District Parks uh, across from the aquarium. And as we've talked about many times in here, the carousel is set to open Labor Day. And there's a, a lot of other upcoming events, continuing events on the website. So I suggest just go to rosekennedygreenway.org to check that out. And then uh, lastly, the, uh, I was asked to note that we have now uh, begun to maintain the Armenian Heritage Park, which we weren't previously, but we have a three-year contract to do that. So the Greenway's excited about that. And we also were recently honored by uh, Mayor Menino for our uh, Green, uh, it was the Green of Eight Boston Business Award for our sustainability operations and commitment to the environment. We're looking forward to seeing what other initiatives we can enact to continue that relationship. And also, we were recognized by the City Parks Alliance, which are an independent nationwide membership organization solely de dedicated to uh, urban parks. And they selected us as a frontline park, an example of urban parks excellence. So that was an honor as well. Um, unless any other questions, that's all I have. I have a question. Yeah. Why is it that uh, the conservancy is having such a difficult time working with uh, Friends of the North End Park? Well, I, I don't believe that we, we are having a difficult time working with them, but um, a, a lot of it exists prior to um, the people that are on both the board, the conservancy board members, the staff, as well as those that were involved in the FODNEC groups prior. So it was like this history kind of issue that didn't really have anything to do with the people that are involved now. We had a community meeting um, in which we invited all of the North End, uh, what was that, a couple months ago now, I think. And we continue to do those to see how we could do it, um, do certain events and programs in order to you know, help both groups. But we also had Daffodil Day, uh, or two months ago, April 4th, the record for the unfortunate events. But, which seemed to go well, and that was a strict partnership with Botman. So I, I think the, as far as I know, the relationship is fine. Um, but if, if it isn't, then, then I, I don't know how to, I've never heard anything. Well, I, I just feel like most of us need to be reminded that they're working with tax dollars from the state of Massachusetts, you know, and the people in the North End are members of that state, therefore they're working for them. So if friends of the North End Pack needs, needs to be able to work with them, they should open the doors and make it happen. Like I said, I've, I've had uh, conversations with many of the members of, of that group. Um, I'm one of them, so. I'm sorry? I'm one of the members. Oh, well, I, well then why were you at our community meeting, George? Because I was dropped all the meetings. Unfortunately, I can't put them all on my schedule. All right, well, then you were, you were represented by others that were in attendance, and uh, we discussed many concerns that, I mean, I think a lot of it is we share the concerns. Uh, you know, one of the issues that is brought up continually with North End Parks is one of shade, um, especially because of the pergola there. It doesn't really give you sort of shape. But when that was designed five years ago, they didn't, whoever did, wanted to make the design didn't anticipate this being a shade area. So, you know, so we're, now it's become to the point where 
okay, well, we have these sunbathers that go there a lot, but there's also this element of shade not being there that we didn't know would you know, existed at the time. So we are trying to work with groups and say, well, what's, how do we improve this? But, you know, it's, it's a continuing process, and a lot of it is trying to fix stuff that we didn't anticipate. So that's why the umbrellas are coming in. Is that, is that the solution? I don't know. We'll see how it goes. If not, then we, then we go back to the drawing board. Same thing with the daffodils and that daffodil day. If that was something they wanted to create color, so let's do it. You know, what else do we need to do there? We have to keep uh, searching for ways and, and uh, talk to each other. But um, I, I don't know if there's been any restrictions uh, that I've been aware of in terms of the group. Thank you, John. Um, so we're going to stop the agenda. First is Nick Dan Pascalis here. He's representing um, a no um, introduction to hockey program. He started this year and not then. I think he just wants to kind of get people an update and um, speak to uh, the season. So, Mr. President, members of the board, thank you for having me tonight. I know tonight I'm not here to discuss any zoning or licensing, but I thought this would be a great forum to talk about uh, what we've been doing in the community and try to get. Uh, uh, promote additional sporting activities in the neighborhood. One, we started last year was the North End Youth Hockey, uh, and we haven't had hockey since I was a kid uh, growing up when I was a night sport and parents playing hockey for the North End. And then the the, uh, the league ended up folding, and most of us had to go to uh, abutting neighborhoods. I went to Charlestown, a lot of folks went on to other uh, neighborhoods. But th last year we started the North End Youth Hockey, and it was a great program, and I want to promote it again. And, uh, just to let you know, the second program I'm going to promote is something that I've been working with a couple of members of the neighborhood is uh, not then Pop One football, which is something that we've never had in this neighborhood. And I don't know if um, we've seen uh, a growth in our neighborhood with a lot of kids in our neighborhood being involved in the North End Youth Soccer Program. There's over 100 kids involved in the uh, North End uh, Baseball that we have. And we have, once again, over 100 kids that play with our T-ball and, and minors and majors, so there's a lot of kids in our neighborhood, a lot of families are staying, so it's uh, important to promote our program. But I don't want to take all the credit because two of the board members that are sitting in, and also the gentleman sitting right here, Stephen Pascantilli and John Pregman, have been attending meetings for the last year and a half in regards to hockey. So, so real quick, uh, our program last year was a 12-week program. It ran uh, two hours every Saturday morning. We had uh, a number of kids uh, from ages 5 to 12 years old. To, uh, full equipment. Uh, we have basic skating skills, learning how to balance, puck handling, uh, shooting, skating backwards, skating forward. Uh, a lot of uh, drills that we conducted over the uh, the two the two hours of uh, practice. We also had uh, set games that we played in, in between amongst ourselves. So it was a great program. The program was two hundred and fifty dollars for the twelve weeks. Uh, uh, you have to supply your own equipment. Basic skating skills were uh, rec required uh, in, in the full equipment. This year, we're expanding our program starting uh, November the 30th, which is Saturday, we're trying to keep the same hours Saturday from 8 to 10 in the morning. It's going to be a 15 week program, um, which ends on March, I believe, March the 8th. And once again, it's uh, full skating, uh, full equipment. Um, we're seeking kids from ages uh, 5 to 12. However, uh, if anyone is four years old, certainly not going to be denied uh, as long as they can, base, like I said, basic skating skills and we don't want anyone getting hurt. Once again, focusing on the fundamentals of ice hockey. Um, we have a number of group coaches out there that are helping us uh, practice and teach the kids. And the goal is for next year is to increase the number of kids that we had from last year. My goal is to have anywhere from 25 to 30 kids. Uh, which we're calling the introduction program, and then next year hopefully develop into what more um, more of a, a, a might team, a sport team, a PV team, so we can hockey uh, can remain in the, uh, the neighborhood for a long time. Um, we I will post this on NorthEndWaterfront.com. I am working with Phil to get a fly into the regional. Hopefully, we're going to have. Uh, uh, a registration day here at the Nazar Center, maybe one day next week, but throughout the summer. Anyone can contact me if you know if anyone is interested, we can uh, get them registered. This year, the fee went up to $300, but it's a 15 week program, so um, it, it, uh, it's not a lot compared to other programs that are, that are throughout the, the city of Boston and outside the city of Boston. For example, my son played for 
came to Tupaki and that was close to a thousand dollars for him to play. And I'd much rather him play in the neighborhood where I can walk to a beautiful skating rink. Um, so that's it with, with North and Utahki and there'll be plenty of information uh, that's over uh, North and Waterfront. Uh, Dot com and regional review and anywhere else I'll have flyers posted. Second program I like to talk about uh, is it really something that I've been working with really John um, closely about is the North End trying to put together the North End Papuana Association. Um, unfortunately, over the last year, I found it very difficult to get into. In order to have a football program, you need to get into the National Pop Water Association, which is very difficult, and you have to get into a certain district. So, very tough to do. So, what we did is we're going to try to do a, a, maybe a little, a little pilot program. Uh, I've been working with, with the South Boston Pop Water Association. My son played for South Boston last year, and it, took, and it was a great program for $100. I was able to get full equipment other than the cleats and the uh, cleats and protective gear. Sorry, I'm um, but for a hundred dollars, it was an eight-week uh, eight-week schedule. So this year, I'm, I'm working with South Boston to see if we can get, um, get some kids from North End who are interested in the water, full equipment. Um, ages they ages are uh, up to 15, and their age groups are very different. So the F group, which is five to seven year old kids, they're also with full full equipment and so on and so forth. So the prices are pretty low. It's a hundred dollars for the F group, which is uh, the five to seven year olds, and then fifty dollars for the the older groups. And once again, full equipment is supplied, and it's an eight week program. They start in August and they have practices prior to school. They have practices actually before the school starts four days a week in, um, in August and then one game on Sunday. But once school starts, it goes down to two days a week on practice and the game from Sunday. But you'll hear more about um, Pop Warner, uh, work with, with South Boston. If we can get enough kids in the neighborhood to go over to South Boston, see an interest in that sport, we can do some here in the neighborhood. But we have the facilities right around the corner, so you'll hear more about these programs. And if you have any questions, everybody knows how to contact me. Uh, my office is located at 62 B Commercial Wharf East, and my phone number that can be reached at is 617-646-4428. Stephen, members of the board, thank you for the opportunity for me to talk about. Did you see membership? Are you seeking? Well, right now with the North End Utahki, uh, my goal was the program to be self-sustaining so we didn't have to uh, go and seek money. I understand that a lot of our business owners, a lot of our uh, corporate folks that are here that sponsor programs. With $300 for our 15-week program is terrific and that should cover the ice time and shirts and pucks and, but I, I will say this we came short a little bit last year and the not that athletic association stepped up to the plate and gave us a, a nice donation and the not that against drugs stepped up to the plate and gave us a nice donation to cover the cost of the ice time for, for our kids but right but I am not trying to seek fundraising for these programs because I believe they could be self-sustaining just the, I just good good job everyone. I mean, I uh, appreciate your help and efforts. Hey, I think the program's so. great. Yeah, so. it's going well. And uh, if anybody's interested in, in football too, just please make sure we know because we're, we're like Dan said, we're, we're trying to really develop these and get them better and better. So that we can, I mean, right now the, the only option for football that we saw that was viable was trying to do this partnership. But ultimately, we'd like it to be a North End, our own, same thing with hockey, and getting these things to, to grow. So, but we won't know unless you're interested. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, next on the agenda is uh, St. Joseph's Society, St. Joseph's Feast. Um, they're going to present their plan to uh, potentially move the festival, or the feast, I don't think just said festival, the feast into uh, into the Prado. The Prado's, um, we don't know what the Prado is. It's also the Paul Revere Mall, the Paul Revere statue. Some people don't know what it's the Prado, but they're gonna, they, they, want, they would like to move it from Lower Hanover Street at Battery Street into the Prado. And, um, some of the members of the club are here. You can come up here, Joe, and present right from here, okay? No. And what we're going to do is we're going to let them speak, and I know there's a lot of abutters here, and I'm going to I'm going to ask the abutters, I'm going to be allowed to speak first, and then we'll open it to the public. And... Yeah, not just speak. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe Matarano, chairman of the board, St. Joe's Society, 467 Campbell District. 
John Reggiani, our events coordinator. What I'm going to try to do is give you kind of a quick overview of what's going on. And then I'm going to turn it over to John. After that, if you want to ask questions, we'll be available. Uh, as you know, the, the feast that's been going on here since probably 1915, somewhere in there. So we've been a part of the community for a long time. We've had a couple of events in the trial over the past few years, and they seem to be well received by everyone in our event. As you would probably would remember some of you that have attended. But what we're trying to do is change the concept a little bit of, of the feast. Um, we want to try and. Can you speak up oh, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> we're trying to change the concept of, uh, of St. Joseph's feast somewhat. Um, we, what we're trying to do is get more of a cultural event, more of an Italian event, and on the, in that regard, we do have a lot of people who want to attend and participate. Now, the Italian consulate is, would like to participate. There are, uh, let me see, Angelo Picardi and his group, uh, them packed, would all like to, to participate. Mass College of Art, uh, Ferrandello Lyceum, and, and quite a few others. And a lot of the restaurants uh, think it's a good idea. They want to participate also. What we're trying to eliminate is the vendors. Uh, now, there's been some complaints over the past few years of Malua and Over Street that, uh, about noise and such. But what we want to do is if we get Put everything into a trial, it'll be an upscale event. It, it will be very culturally oriented to the Italian way of life. We'll have block drop. We're going to have uh, Italian serenades. It's going to be really upscale. The restaurants would like to participate in a small way and have a little, their own stands, not vendor stands, just umbrella tables. Stuff like that with music, tiny music, and uh, more of a, I think something you more appreciate than what we're trying to do. So, of course, if, if, if there won't be anything going on down, down the lower end of Hanover Street. Everything will take place in the trial with your blessing, I hope, and we'll try and keep it. On, a, on some kind of a scale that would be appropriate, but not that. So, on that note, I can introduce John Reginini, who will uh, try and be a little more specific. I think what we're going to do. Thanks, John. What we're trying to do is basically have restaurants prepare the food. There'll be uniform tents that they'll all be lined up on both sides of the Prado coming in. We'll have a stage near the fountain, which we've done before, and we'll have a cafe around one side, potentially a beer and wine section on one side of the, uh, the, st the stage. And we will have kids' events, but more of a uh, face painting, arts and crafts. Uh, we're going to have a magician come in. We're having a potentially a band called Nupoli that comes in and teaches the kids how to do a tarantella. So it's more that type of event. We're going to have a kid's corner. <clears throat> We're really trying to focus it more of a family event. Um, being where we are down that part of Hanover Street, it's difficult to do it because of just the location of where we are. So we feel what we're trying to do this year is just make it a little more cultural, a little more focused on the Italian, you know, festivals that happen in Italy, and that's really the concept. And bringing some of the restaurants in because they support us throughout the whole year. The restaurants really donate to some of our functions. They donate to some of the charities that we do stuff for. So we're trying to give back to the neighborhood. NEMPAC, some of their people are going to perform. Some of the kids from NEMPAC are going to perform. Um, so we're really trying to make it more of a neighborhood type event and uh, that's really the whole concept of what we're trying to do. 
Also, okay. also uh, what we're trying to do also is, is bring uh, some of the dignitaries from Italy, and especially Riesi in Sicily, over here, and they agreed to come and participate. And uh, I, I think uh, we'll have, we'll, we'll be giving out some awards to a lot of hardworking people in the North End. We're going to have a, a kids from uh, MPAC over here singing. We're going to have like, a chorus of those people. And so we'll try to make it more of a local North End Italian cultural event. And the Saint. Everything is going to be the same as we're going to go up the street with the saint on Sunday, and the saint, that's all going to be the same. We're going to bring out the saint on Friday, on Friday evening, head down Hanover, and come back. So everything will be basically the same, except it will be coordinated in the Prado, and hopefully you will all enjoy it. Now, if you have any questions, I really don't so, think that's a good on. idea. I'm, I'm sorry, you know. I'll let you speak. We, we'll, we'll ask questions first, and then you, you can ask a hundred questions, all right? I just like to stay in format, that's all. Um, so, and also, when you when you, when you when you raise your hand, just where you live, please, just so we know when you're... 19 and a half thousand. Yes. Tony's going to talk to you. Just a quick question. It sounds like a nice event. It sounds like something that been hoping for a long time to keep it local. Um, but I do have a question because there are vendors that work all weekend in the Parado. Uh, T-shirt stands, I think that there's a food stand. And so what, hap what happens to them they, that weekend? They're not available. They can't come in that weekend because the Parks Department, we've already been through it with the Parks Department. So for that three days, they're not allowed. To be there. But are they compensated in some way? Because they, they do pay for a permit to be there. For I'd have to talk to the, the Parks Department. They never said anything to us about it, but I guess we'd have to I ask Because they, they are also local vendors. Yeah. I'd have to ask that question. I, I would hate to see them you know, evicted for, for a special event. You know, it's, it's kind of not fair, but maybe they can be incorporated. I'm, well, I mean, I'm they, not they, sure. They, they do have a permit. To they pay a monthly them. fee. The, the vendors in the Prado play. They pay a monthly fee. It's it's, it's for the boys and girls club. It's, it's a program for right. the Pano runs for the boys and girls right. club. It, it's just the way they do it. Right. But um, well, it there's, really wouldn't be. A, well, if there's a way to compensate, well, maybe they the can. Vendors, maybe uh, they can just stay in there. Well, 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 well I don't. I don't see what the Phil, can we just ask the questions first, and then we'll open it up. But we're going to ask the, yeah, question. Yeah, but we're gonna ask the questions first, the and then you can ask questions. Just let us stay in format. Well, say it right. If they operate, then give the money to Charles. Phil, can we just ask the questions first? You've been coming to meetings for 17 years. Well, you said you can use these eliminated. We're asking the questions first, Phil, and then you can ask questions. I'll come back to you and give the money to Charles. They don't give it to the North End. Phil, Phil. You didn't say that. Phil, please, let's not debate, buddy. All right, let's not debate. You don't know everything. You think you know everything. I know. We're going to ask the questions. We're going to ask the questions first. Then you can ask the questions. Then you ask the questions. You interrupt too many meetings. Let us ask questions first. We will. I'll ask the parks department tomorrow. I'll call them up and find out what the procedure is and what the rules are. You know, they haven't said anything to us so far, but I'll find out. We'll go along with whatever's. Well, I just don't yeah. want people to be displaced. There's people in there, they, 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 they make a living in there. That's, right. all, that's all I'm, all I'm trying to say. Okay. We'll, we'll, whatever happens, we'll work out, some, work out something that uh, no one will lose, lose anything. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll go on as far as that goes. We won't, uh, we, won't, we won't evict anybody. We don't have the right to evict anyone. It's up to the box of the if they, if they say, <coughs> we'll see, even if they say, they have to leave. That's we'll find a way. Yeah. We have the same issue with parking when the business on the street. All those folks who park your car, they got to ask to take the car away. You know what I mean? It's only for the three days. You know, we all pay taxes, we pay excess taxes, we all have parking stickers. The city doesn't guarantee your parking spot because the business is going to be at the, on the street. And the same token if there's an event in the Parado. I'm sure there's events, but the vendors can't be there. You know what I mean? It's not the perfect scenario, but it's the way it is. I mean, it's the same way for. Uh, again, neighbors who live here, who park their car, who pay excess taxes, you know, park the the is that nobody has to move their car. Speaking of the parking their cars, actually that's going to be to your benefit. Exactly. Because we're not going to be, 
uh, we're not going to tie up tie up the streets like a chatter and hand, hand, hand over maybe just in front of the club because they bring the same other than that there, there won't be the no parking signs all over the place like there is so the residents everyone can buy it with that's a good thing. yeah that, that, that's a good you said you said you're gonna you said you're gonna have a you said you're gonna have a and I remember I'm a Don Delicata, so I know how the feasts function. Right. We we get a special permit and we have yeah. a beer garden down by the yeah. um, by the segways. Right. Are you gonna have your beer and wine contained? It's gonna be contained in one area. It's not yes, yes, yes. yes. one area, and we're gonna have like bistro tables, high tables, white tablecloths. Kind of like we do it on the end of the yeah. street. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. It'll be all fenced in. I got you. And now, yeah, that's what we do. Sorry, Angelo Bacardi is formulating. Uh, a lot of the entertainment, and uh, he's got a promise from Al Di Natale, which I'm all familiar with, and his orchestra, and, and they'll be there to play, I believe, on Saturday, Saturday evening. So that's the type of entertainment we're going to have, and I think you'll all enjoy it. How okay. uh, late is the uh, entertainment go? We're uh, thinking of uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, uh, 9 o'clock on Sunday. Maybe 9 on Sunday. That's the way Maria, Maria. I have two questions actually. Um, the first question is now where is the chapel with the seat going to be held all weekend? Is it going to be in front of the club? No. So, no. No. So where is it going to be? It will be in the front. In the front of yes. the club. Yes. This, okay. this year it will be right there. So they'll know this is, is a religious event. It's St. Joseph's event. <coughs> Everyone who here will they'll know by the, the statue. That's what and just one more question. You yeah. mentioned um, the presence of possibly Italian dignitaries yes. there. Will you have heightened security because of these dignitaries? Uh, they, they won't be that upscale. Upscale. I We always have a police force there. We always have one. Obviously, a dignitary coming from a different country, obviously, there'd be. Backpacks won't be allowed. What other advantages? Logistically speaking, do you see to having this held in the Prado other than the fact that it will free up parking that it's currently taking? So um, we do have it on every street. Well, I think if you know the feast on uh, Hanover Street, you know, say the uh, St. Anthony's Feast and the Fisherman's Feast are contained in their own little neighborhoods. That's fine because the, the neighborhoods love it and there's no complaints. We, we have a problem with the fire department here on Hanover Street. It's a main street. It's a lot of foot traffic. And it, I think by having it contained in the Prado, it frees up the whole street. So there's no interference from commercial to, to cross street, really. Uh, it'll be wide open. Everything will be in the Prado. Tourists will be there. I mean, it, they're going to come anyway. Yeah. You'll still take up spaces that you typically take up for entertainment. Right, and that'll be you wide open. Spots on China during the feast. Exactly, time. exactly. It'll be wide open. There won't be anything going. There. We just might have to get uh, a couple of trucks in into the back of the school, uh, Elliott School. Other than that, both Hanover and China Street will be wide open. On Carlson Street, some lady on it, on both on Carlson Street. I have one more question. I'm not sure. Okay. Have you spoken to the Old Aunt Church vicar yet? They're on, they're on my schedule. Uh, uh, yes, we have. We, we've spoken to them, but we haven't had a formal meeting, but we've spoken over the phone, and they, they're very enthusiastic about it. And also, we've had a meeting with the Waterfront uh, the Association. The no, and the Resident Association. Residents Association. That's Thursday night. Any, so. Anyone else have any other questions? No. You met with the Elliott School yet? Uh, we've been friends with the Elliott Schools for the last six or seven years, and we do a lot with them. Uh, they, they help us with uh, parking during our feast, and over the course of the year, we, we don't uh, donate a lot, of, a lot of things to the school. So we have a, a very good rapport with them. Uh, I can't think of her name right now. We have talked to her already. Yeah, we talked to her, and she knows. Very, very enthusiastic also. She's going to actually, she's going to, the school is open to us for those three days. So we need, we need, we need, we need, we need. Would you like to have Two questions. Are you going to have board parties or anything like yes, that? Yes, I spoke to, uh, 
I did take a title from a political body company. They sell some things to streets, and you see, we're going to have extra trash barrels in the Prado. We want a political body thing. Well, we're thinking if we can get him into the Prado, that would be fine. I, I don't know if that would work, but what we usually do is put him in, when we have something in the Prado, in the back of the fire station, on the China Street side, and we have maybe four there, plus a, a handicapped quarter party, and if we need a couple more, we'll, we'll get whatever we think we need. But if, if we can get a couple into the, uh, into the Prado, uh, that would be fine, maybe up towards Hanover Street, rather than maybe one down the back by the top. So we'll see, but uh, we will have poker parties there. Well, I don't think you said that. No, I think I want to say, I love the fact that we're talking about culture, we're talking about Italian, Italian heritage, we're talking about our faith, you know, St. Joseph's and stuff like that. I've been here for many, many years. I've always known the feast for being events where you go and you play games and buy fried food. Right. I think it's a great thing. I think uh, yeah. Prado is a perfect venue for those places right. were made for that type of thing, like the piazzas in Italy. Yeah, all yeah, the that's correct. take place in piazzas, just like like uh, like Paul Rios Park, which are usually correct, and everything that the cook I'm seeing things right. up is contained, is safer. I love the fact that Lempak is going to be there, which is part of the elder school also, yeah. the kids are there. Be there. I think it's a great thing. I, 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 I it's going to incorporate as many things in the North End as we can possibly do. And uh, what you were saying, uh, what is that? Uh, our, 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 you know, our culture is so yeah. watered down. You know, it's right. nice to be able to put something well, What we're trying to do is, when back in when they first started St. Joseph's Feast, there wasn't any any carnival, uh, any, any, any rides, any gambling, any, it, it was just uh, what we're trying to do now. Yeah. You know, and we're trying to get back to that if you let us. Yes. So, and one more, one more what question. time are the events going to start? Like on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Well, it'll be the same as the uh, yeah, feast, 11 in the morning. Well, we Friday, 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 the feast doesn't start until like six, 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 six to ten on Friday. The hours will be the same like they typically are. Yeah. Right, yeah, right. So yeah. the vendors could be in the crowd on the afternoon on Friday if they want. There won't be any vendors in there. No, no, no I mean, that's the existing vendors. You're right, yeah. You're right. But the restaurants will be selling. The restaurants will be We'll start at 6 o'clock at night yeah. on Friday night. And those will be local businesses? No. All local yeah, restaurants. Yeah, Lucia's, uh, Strega, uh, Frankie D. Frankie D. Yeah. Will they be selling the food or is it just like complimentary? No, no, it's, it's going to be, there will be a charge for the food. There's no charge, of course, come in and listen to the music or the entertainment, but there will be. Food. And the schedule is the same, Friday's at 6, Saturday's at 12, and yeah. Sunday's at 12. Yeah, that's right, it's the same as you Until 11 yeah. o'clock in the night. Yeah. There also yeah. will be a mass on Sunday for the Prado. Would you, we usually have that anyway when we have when we do an event on the Prado. So Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, I believe. I think it's 10. 10. Will the food already be prepared off, off the premise? Are they going to be cooking in the Prado? I mean, there, there will be, be some, there there will be some cooking in the Prado. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? There will be some cooking in the Prado. So you're not eliminating the vendors? Well, we're not. We're just changing it to a restaurant, but we're controlling how it looks. So we're going to bring in all the uniforms looking tents. They have to dress a certain way. They're going to, you know, it's going to be more of a uniform way they have to. And the only thing they can advertise is a 10 by 12 sheet on their tape. Yeah, they'll advertise, each restaurant will advertise them all. Um, all right. Are there any of us that would like to um, ask a question? Yes. At name and address, I'm sorry. I know who you are. I just wondering what you are. Tapson Street. My window's are right there. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. We have to put up a lot yeah. in that parade with the opera singer, the tap player, all, all day long. I think we had enough in there so far. You know? My grandson gets up 5 o'clock in the morning. And he goes to bed at 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. His window is right there. So how is he supposed to get a night's sleep if that's going to go till 9, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night? I don't think it's fair to us that we have to put up with that all day long. We have enough stuff in that place that we don't have to smell food, listen to music, 
You don't know what it's like living there with a bandstand in front of your window. Well, you know, there's really nothing we can really say about that except that these people down the end of Hanover Street have been putting up with it since 1915. Well, okay. That's now, what they want. What we're trying to do is we're trying to try to stop the two clock. We're trying to compromise, and we're trying. We, they asked us to go to 11 the city. They said that would be all right. We cut it back to 10 o'clock just to, for people. Like, I understand the abutters might not care for the music. Or you don't know somebody. what it's like because you don't live there. If you have to listen to that day and night, then you know what it's like to live here. We pay taxes and we pay high taxes. So I think that we should get what we want too once in a while. We, we can't stop all that other stuff in here. You think we could stop a piece? It didn't work out before, but it shouldn't work out now. Any other questions? Hi, um, Lauren Nelson, and I also live on Tileson Street in the same building as Emily. Um, and uh, I don't think I can stop you from, from doing this at all, but I, I would ask, um, I have a few, few security questions, because when you're involving alcohol, which I thought was illegal in all city parks, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Very well could be. Um, we've been having lately, the last maybe two or three years, these sort of roving bands of parties that go through the Prado. They break bottles, they urinate in the planters, um, they, uh, we've seen people have intercourse in the Prado during some of those times. So, and when we call the police, they say call 911, we call 911, and then they don't ever come. Well, we, we need to know that there's we're going to have element. we're going to have police officers walking throughout the Prado the entire day and night. So and overnight and till about eleven or twelve o'clock, like we usually do. And, well, and then yeah. we'll have everything yeah, out of it. Have our own security in there from eleven right through the, the morning yeah. hours. Because you keep your stage so, up all night. Right. Yeah, we will have people there. Right, but the statue will be there. They could even go there all the so time. So we, we will have security twenty four seven. And security, is that private security or right state security? Police. Yeah. The police are there to tell Well, they have to watch the Saints. City of Boston. Right? Yeah. So the chapel will be in there with the Saints, so they'll, they'll, they'll they have it. I hope they're all there. Have and, and, there. and you mentioned that the Elliott School is going to be accessible to you. Does that mean yeah. the playground is going to be accessible at night? Because we've fought to have that not be accessible at night. Accessible, it won't be. We're not having any functions there. in that. No, it'll but just will the gates be open? But the school will be accessible to them if they need to be we, we we're, we're probably going to draw power from yeah, power. the other school. We might but you have to close the gates there. at night so yeah. that people can't go into yeah. the playground right. at night. Yeah. We're going to draw our power from the Elliott school, most likely. Okay. How's this? We're kind of demanding now that you close that gate. How's that? I think that's what she's trying to say. Yeah, so that's we, fine. We, we'd love for you to close yeah. the gate if, if yeah. you guys are allowed to go in there. I don't know yeah. what the world comes to. Is that more work? Yeah. Otherwise, I do actually appreciate the... Well, you won't have any room of bad people coming through and throw a bottle to Okay. Because mm -hmm. everything, there won't be any bottles in there, any cups. Yeah. Okay, and they stay within the... They have to stay at the table and drink them? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. No, they're not allowed to leave. Okay. okay. It'll be contained. Contained. Like, like um, when the Fisherman's has the feast, they usually have it down in the pocket one on the right-hand side on fleet. Um, St. Joseph and Madonna look up, they had it down on the, um, where Segways is, there's a parking lot, yeah. and that, you can't leave. They'll probably have to it's fence it in. It's fence generally it. That's if they get a beer and right. wine permit in there. Not, right. This is all, this is all speculation. They haven't been approved of anything yet. Well, it's also, it's generally not people who will be allowed into those venues that are the ones that are causing the problems. No. Underage so drinkers. People are going to be there. People, people are going to be there. The people who cause the problems do this. They what? The people that are causing all those problems you're talking about live with us. No, most of them aren't from the neighborhood. Uh, what are they in the neighborhood? Yeah. Many of them don't. Yeah, yeah. 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 Many.
and the police go on Charleston Street, and they still not who's going on because it's all in the So this would be just added to an enemy. It won't be added to it. Actually, we're going to deprive those people of that area. So that won't be added. It's we'll be there. We're not them people itself. We don't all live here. Right. They're not coming in. Not. They won't be coming into where we are. They live here on Charleston Street. Oh, well, this, how, how could she's saying it's going to add to the noise. She's saying it's going to add to you. Is this a reason for us? And then they go on the roofs and they dance. Do they come? I mean, I know we've lost. They're not going to dance. 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 Another big meeting with that. Yeah. We can't stop kids from having a It's just you're saying it adds to it. I understand. I understand your concern. And, uh, and I, I think it's something you could probably put up for 365 days a year. But they, they have the band on the panel where you can still hear it from the bottom. Yeah. This, they can see it, and, and you see them on the phone. Yeah, we, 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 can't stop, we can't stop culture, we can't stop history, we can't stop our parties and our things because there's bad people in the neighborhood. We never stop those bad people from acting no. the way they act. That's no, what we have to do. You know, you know, of course, that's true. Why are we going to hold them accountable for our people doing nonsense? We're talking about it. Stephanie, 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 Stephanie,
going to discuss some of this on the ground. We'll go into more detail with them in the meeting. So that's one of our objectives. I just want to take, I just want to get Stephanie had a question. I just want to make sure I recognize that. Uh, well, I more more of a comment. I agree with a lot of what Bill said about it would be nice to see the feast get back to what I hear it was years before I moved here, more cultural. But I am concerned that it seems like there wasn't much time given to the community to, to talk about this. And I know people who live in areas where other feasts are staged, and some of them make plans every year not to be here during the feast to the stage in their neighborhood. And certainly there wasn't even a chance for the people who bought the product to be able to make those kinds of plans now. I also have some concerns about what kind of precedent we're setting for the use of a public park. The alcohol question's already been raised, and I understand there have been masses held in, in the park before. And this has certainly been a Catholic community for a long time. I grew up in a Catholic community. But I do think we need to be careful that we don't set the precedent of having a, a very explicitly religious feast in our public park. Because I think people of another faith, oh, no. think, oh, this is a oh, nice park, and we'd like to hold something here too. And then what's the city of Boston supposed to say as public space? Well, the mass is in conjunction. What we're doing there. I don't think she's, she's talking just, about your mass for the feast. Yes, the mass talking about masses have been no, 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 I'm talking, talking about this is this is this is, is this is a feast and it's going back to something. Well, we used to do St. Rosalie's feast in Christopher Columbus Park, if I remember correctly, they did just a couple of times down there. I, I I I'm not an attorney, but I'm just saying I think there are some things that should be considered and investigated, and it but, would have been you know, nice if you could have come to the community sooner right, and maybe. Outlined your staging. We, we really did this ourselves just on, in the last few months. We, we can't come to this. If we didn't plan a year ago, if we did, of course, we would have had meetings a long time ago. I know it's not. Well, I apologize for that. And, but as far as the matter, hey, if someone wants to object to it, and uh, I think it would be a sin actually to tell you the truth. You know, I mean, we do an entire neighborhood, we have saint feasts on the yes. street, which is, can I get any more public on the street? I mean, if the public park is public, the street is more public, the sound is more public. I'm One conversation at a time. Get a call. Can I just, this is not my city job. My family owns a building on Thousand Street. Are you going to show them a plan y yes, that like, they can have another chance to meet with you? Because they're concerned about noise and what's going right. to be in front of their windows and where the placement of certain things are going to uh, be. All right, let me, let me do this. this one, I, I'd like to ask you guys so, a question here. What is, did they give you a timeline? Did the city say you need to know what the neighborhood thinks by this? time frame because I know your feast is the last weekend in July and there's apparently people who have a lot of questions that can't be answered um, some people but this is why we meet we meet because we need them to know what is going sure. on in the neighborhood these meetings are for the abutters so I live on the feast I live at 406 Andrew Street that feast has been in front of my house for a thousand years right. I wouldn't even know what to go for wasn't in front of my house okay. Okay. every the last weekend in July every year my whole life my kids now we, I it's part of my life right okay. but um, people have questions, and, the you know, and, it, in and it's place. easy for me to say, hey, great, we have more parking spaces, and hey, I don't have to smell uh, chicken, TV, and broccoli anymore every week, and I don't have to listen to the, uh, the, the speakers that are on the fire escape next to my building every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but I don't want to do it, I don't want to wanna be relieved of that at the expense of people on Tyler Street, because I know that Mrs. Um, Mrs. Pickle has been living on Tyler Street for 80 Sorry. They have never had the feast in the crowd, so they have some they have some serious serious concerns, they have some serious issues. So what I would like what I'm gonna recommend is that can we can you guys come back and see us next month? We meet the second Monday of July. It's before your feast. That's still July is the next month. Next month. No, but still, we need in July. No, I know, but you haven't asked anybody else if anybody wants to make a motion. I didn't say that I can table it just based on the meeting to pass it to the president. No, I'm just slowing you down there a little bit. George. Uh, George Collins, 12 Unity Street. Come back up to the panel. First of all, I'm glad that someone is going to stop the carnival atmosphere of the feast. That's been the biggest 
thing that I, I I'm not trying to insult the other people. No, 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 really, I just really they're, I, they're I, wonderful I, what they do. I don't like just trying to be for myself. <laughs> but we want I personally it's a wonderful piece. Having all these carnival people and it just it just I don't know, it's a bad taste in your mouth. Uh, my couple questions are, you know, you've taken up the parking lot in all of Charter Street for the past right. Never um, have. You will not take any of those parking no, spots and no, we, we might have to move a car to get uh, a, a truck in there, but other than that, it's been there, very there difficult. There won't be the no parking signs on charter. And there won't be the other, except in front of uh, our building, where we take the sink and uh, everybody else is there. Well, in the past the years, it's been difficult for all the bodies. Right. They, 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 they have to move their cars. There's a good size to this, and there's some size that people don't agree with. But we're, we're trying to have a balance here. And it's hard to make everyone happy, but I think the majority of people are, are happy that we're trying to do something different, something more uh, more in line, more upscale, more culturally. I want to make, well, well, go ahead, Ralph. It's the last question. Ralph, what the, the last location, question. What does the location of the feast have to do with the, ups, like, the upscale and the cultural effect? Why can't you just do it on Hannah Street? Right. Doesn't well, make any sense to me. Because it's, it's much more difficult to, yeah. you know, if we're going to get do that, okay. Why is it difficult? Why is one not doing? Well, we might as well bring the vendors back in and do it the same way. So you are having vendors, just local vendors. Yeah, local vendors that support, yeah, that's you know, all of us, yeah, really. Why can't we just have it on Hanover Street? Doesn't make any like that since 19. It's much more difficult to do it down that part of Hanover Street. Why, though? That's the question. Why? You have to set a stage up. There's no center place to put the stage at the Prado. You can put it down by the fountain. It's the center of where all the activities are going on. It, it's, the price department has restrictions on us. What we can do, how much room we can take up. I need at this time to come the last question. All right. I've been in town more than I live on the Unity Street when we bought the Prado. And so far tonight, I'm listening to a lot of smoke and nervous people talking. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, started by putting the tent into the prowl for some music and so forth. That's for a couple of hours. That goes by, that's fine. But I got a few issues tonight and it's just not one. But much of them. Me. Probably the first one I should say is this is a very short time. Nothing was put into the newspaper and so forth to talk about this meeting. Second of all, you're talking about, gee, it sounds great. We're going to relieve all the cars on Hanover Street. Well, the Madonna Del Cap is going to have their feast and they're going to be right in the same place. So what are we going to do? We're going to have freedom of cars for one week and not the others. Yeah. What's going to stop the Madonna Del Cap from that, thinking you about it? can't do anything about that. I'm not saying you can't do anything about it. Listen to me. What's stopping the Madonna Del Cap now to turn around and say, well, if they're going to go into the Prado, why don't we go into the Prado? Now, wait a minute. We have all these beautiful restaurants on Hanover Street that do a great business. A lot of them say, well, we're not doing that great of a business, but I walk up and down the city here, and I see the restaurants are packed. There's times you can't even walk on the sidewalks, never mind. Now, who's going to benefit by this? We're going to take away the vendors, and we'll put them so they can have even more business into the crowd. Simple as ABC. You know, I, I don't think that's the idea. They, they want to be good neighbors. They're not trying to make a buck. They're not going to they Oh, wait, wait, no, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't say they're not going to make a buck. Okay. If they're going to start cooking food and putting it out there, they're there to make a buck. Yeah, but wouldn't it be better if you want to make a buck? Do you people from the Hampshire? I mean, just <coughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, you either have a oh, I don't I'm not addressing guy selling. I'm not addressing you. I'm not addressing you. I'm not addressing you. I'm addressing you. I'm asking you. I'm asking you to be quiet, but I'm not talking to you. I'm asking you. I just ask you a question. One at a time. Okay? I've heard you all night long. Why is it? The feast has been on Hanover Street since God made cement. And now all of a sudden, we come up with this idea. Because you know something, I would have been on it several years ago that this was going to try to happen. A bunch of people started to quit to move from your church onto Hanover Street. You put the, the tent into the Prado. The other day, the water fountain is a little bit low. I call it the city. Come down here because I said it's dangerously low. It's never, it's never that low. The guys came right down. They filled it up. 
The other night, they threw bricks in there. And the bricks are in there now. Let me tell you something. The cradle has been used over and over again as a toilet. And I'm talking, now, last year, last year, we had over 90 kids at 11 o'clock at night roaming from the feast coming into the crowd. And we had, to, we had to call the police on that there. Can I just say one thing? I know you, it sounds like you're in opposition and that's fine, but, and I remember what they talked about, the flash mob came in, 90 kids were in there, but I'm not sticking up for St. Joseph, but it, that has nothing to do with them. I'm not I, saying I, it does. You know, I, I'm I not saying they, they're kind of taking it on the chin here for a lot of things that but have nothing to do with them. When I'm saying, if you're in opposition, I, I, I totally I understand. What I'm getting at basically now is, now you're going to put it right inside the car. I even put it right inside the car. Okay. I don't even know the doctor. And <laughs> you're going to bring in a lot of traffic now that used to be on Hanover Street. Now you're going to push it right into the problem. They're going to go from Hanover Street to Prado, Unity Street. And don't tell me we're not going to find food and everything now thrown into the, uh, the fountain. We won't. Why won't we? I guarantee it. Because that's not what we're doing here. You saw, it's not that you have a security problem. Not a problem with us. I mean, we're going to police the whole place. In fact, what we're trying to do is, is work with the friends of the Prado we're going to make donations to them, and we want to get involved with them to really make the product what it should be. And what you, can always right make now. you can always make a donation, yeah, even if you don't go into the product. Yeah, but we're going to do that anyway. You know, we're going to do though. What I'm, what I'm going to do now is, since no more questions, I mean, we need to do something. This is a waste. Guys, I can't take questions all night. Can I ask a quick question, question Steve? You can ask a question, but hey, you I'm not going to ask a question. I'm not going to ask a question. Hold on for a second. Question being here. Are you folks against the feast in general? No, the feast. Not the feast. You're against it in the product. You're against it behind your house, not in front of somebody else's house. That's all the question I have. I'm no, not going to ask you. You might against it in front of my house. It's been on Hanover Street. I'm asking you a direct question. I'm asking you a direct question. Do you mind if it's in front of somebody else's house? I didn't say put it in front of somebody else's house. Do you mind if it's in front of somebody else's house? Do you mind if does someone want a motion to oppose? Does someone want a motion to take? I, I motion to support. All right, time out. Can you so, just tell me if there's going to be a plan that these people can now... Then, Nicole, is that Nicole. Nicole. I don't know if there's a plan. There's obviously a lot of questions that aren't being answered. Right. That's why I'm asking... So my question is being overlooked. And what, your question's not being overlooked. Okay. That's why we're going to motion. If people think that there needs to be a plan put before you guys, then they will vote. Them. Meaning the board will either table it in... Or they'll oppose it. That's why it's, it's July, though. It's going to vote. You know, they can come the back. That's the problem. The, the feast is July 20th. I know, and, and, and we meet the second Monday of the month. If that gives them enough time, it gives them enough. Time. Gives them enough time. I mean, I, 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 I can't control what people, what people present. I can't control if people notify everybody. No, I'm just saying that they need to be. I do know I control the meeting, and we have 45 minutes for two more things. So I, I need to just move forward. So. I'm going to make a motion, please. Make a motion to support. Yeah. Th does anyone second the motion to support? Does anyone want to make no, a motion? No, no, I'll second. Okay. Phillips seconds the motion to support. So there's a motion on the floor. We're going we're gonna to vote on it. So George is, uh, is a motion to support. Philip has seconded the motion. And it's to move the uh, um, St. Joseph's Feast from Hanover Street um, to the Prado. All in favor? All in favor. One, two. All in opposition? One, two, three. One, yeah, anyone has to vote? Opposition. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven in opposition, two in support. Sorry, guys. Billy Ferula, you're up next. Let's make a piece of it. Uh, right. Thank you. First, uh, let me firstly congratulate the newly elected candidate. We had an interesting first meeting. Uh, I'm here tonight on behalf of Nick Morano, who had a personal matter come up, so he wasn't able to be here, so he apologizes for that. Uh, many of you know Nick. Uh, Nick has a location at 373 Hanover Street, which is next door to uh, his uh, 
existing red strip Strega. Uh, used to be uh, Casa de Stile, which was a uh, women's clothing store up until a couple of years ago. It's been closed for a while. Uh, we're here, uh, Nick, a year or so ago, uh, had a zoning change for that from the clothing store to uh, a restaurant with takeout uh, for a restaurant that he's proposing there, which is Strega Cafe and Pizzeria, which I'll describe in more detail. Uh, the purpose of meeting, of being at the meeting tonight, I should say, is that uh, Nick had had a sandwich shop, uh, Nick's famous deli at 66 Cross Street, which uh, he did not renew his lease, and that's closed. And he has a uh, beer, wine, and cordial license at that location that he would like to transfer to this location, uh, to the cafe. Uh, the location at 66 Cross uh, had 30 inside, uh, occupancy for 30 inside and 15 patio seats. This location is 19, so it's, it's smaller. Uh, the requested uh, hours, uh, uh, we have cafe service uh, all day from 7 a.m. until closing. Closing is proposed at 11 o'clock uh, Sunday through Thursday at midnight on Friday and Saturday uh, in keeping with uh, hours, uh, so-called neighborhood hours. Uh, the thought that Nick had had from the beginning with this was uh, to try to uh, complement his existing restaurant, number one next door at Strega, meaning rather than having people stay for dessert, they come into the cafe for dessert, uh, and also uh, if people are waiting, they can go in and have uh, a light appetizer and set. Starting at afternoon service, uh, there will be pizza, uh, sandwiches, and salad, in addition to, again, the cafe service, cafe service, when I say that, it's coffee, tea, uh, breakfast, uh, items, sweet rolls, things of that sort. In the evening, uh, he will have pastry, uh, generally Italian pastry, as you can serve uh, in his restaurant now. So uh, the reason we're here is uh, the request will go to the licensing board to transfer the license from one location to the other. Uh, it's not been licensed. It currently has, as I say, a facility with more seats, going with fewer seats. And uh, that's about the extent of the prescription. A couple of questions about the uh, the timeline uh, yeah. for this deli. When did you first get the license again? To remind me. That I, I, I can't tell you because I didn't do that license. Okay. But he didn't get it at the beginning. Right. No, it's he opened. He had a five year lease, so it's five years since he was actually either in there or, or renovating or whatever he was doing. And uh, the license, I want to say, is probably a couple of years, but I'm not sure exactly. It's not from the beginning. Though. I think it might have been January of 2012, but I'm not sure. Um, and his lease, when did it expire? Uh, May 1st. May 1st. you know how much notification he had to give the owner before his, before his license, before his lease expired? No, but generally there's a provision that usually gives you like a night, maybe the you don't take your option if they don't. And what about the new restaurant? When's the, the schedule open for that? Uh, he's done uh, a minimum of work so far, so uh, the best guess that we've estimated is somewhere uh, in September or October. People, you know what it is? People are confused because people home in the deli, there's no barren wine, so they're like, what, what barren wine? And I, know that, I know that they, you know, that a few people apply, a few right. people receive, right. and um, you know, people are just like, well, what barren wine license? Because he hasn't really exercised it at the deli. But yeah. Someone asked us the. At, at but he has been. Up, I, know, I know he's gone. But I just. Yeah. Some people just. Like, some. Some. I. I I'm being honest. Uh, I have not been served beer or wine in the deli, so I never really paid attention to whether he served someone at the uh, zoning and licensing committee. Uh, uh, Nora asked uh, a similar question, saying uh, that they admitted they had noticed that he had served beer or wine. He closed down on Cross Street. I can't. I don't know the answer to that question. What did he close down for? Uh, effectively, he was out first. No, closed. Yeah, he's been closed yeah, a close couple of months. Okay. Anyone in the audience have any questions? Nobody has a question. Okay.
a lot of questions from the last uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> does, does anyone um, want to make a motion to support? Does anyone want to make a motion to oppose? Does anyone want to make any kind of motion? I'll make a motion to support Straight up, not Nick Verano, rather, sorry, but transferring his malt and wine and cordial's license from Nick Verano's Famous Deli to 373 Hanover, which will now be straight up Eater in Hanover. Motion. Second. So we have a motion to support, and Ralph has second a motion. All in favor? Vote unanimous. Thank you. One for one, Billy. Excuse yourself from this one. Um, she sold in the bill. Thank you for selling the bill. You sold it for me. <laughs> you can't record the story. Again, Bill Carollo. This is uh, Gary Samuels, who, uh, as you just heard, is the purchaser of 90 92 Endicott Street. Uh, the building is a four unit building. Uh, was purchased uh, very soft. The ground floor was set up uh, as an apartment. However, the zoning jacket for this building says three units and store. Uh, best we can determine, and Bill may know better, uh, it wasn't a retail store according to other people on the street, but it was a storage for push cuts for him. Is that so? Uh, at one time it was used for that, so at one time the, the mother of the occupant sold some candy. Illegal. <laughs> it may not have been candy, <laughs> but anyhow. Uh, uh, when Barry uh, started the process to update uh, that unit, uh, it was determined that the unit was not classified as a residential unit. Uh, he's applied to uh, have it reclassified as a residential unit. Uh, once again, I keep looking at Phil because Phil's wife, uh, Mary's family, uh, owned um, part of this building. And one of the other owners uh, used this uh, unit as a place for her to stay when she came into Boston, stayed in the hotel, uh, et cetera, but uh, never, as I said, went through the process. So we uh, don't have a date with the zoning board, but we have filed with the zoning board uh, to reclassify that ground floor uh, as a residential unit as opposed to a store. This is a pretty simple one, too. Um, does anyone have any questions? Okay. Out of curiosity, how many square feet is this building? Uh, it's approximately between 830 and 850 square feet. That's the first floor? First floor, So yeah. the, first, the whole first floor? Yeah, the whole floor. Just to say something, um, I, you know, I know what you're going at. I'd love for you to keep it a storefront, but I know it's difficult to rent out commercial space on the country, but I think we lack. Commercial space on the street, um, commercial space on the street level, but it's your building, it's your investment, and it's done totally. Um, anyone else? I just want to say I agree with you about commercial space. I know the owners of the building, Phil's family, and Sarah who lived there, and they used to own. Yeah. It was Sarah tomorrow, and it was a building I used to. My mother was very good friends with her. There was never really commercial space at this location. It was, I mean, they had the biggest amount of people they had in there was St. Things Feast Open House. You would just open up. Saturday used to, live, you know, stay down there. They had storage. So, and that's why any other new ice cream thing is not doing well either. So, yeah. I mean, if you just fit a family candy. in there. Yeah, I think you had so much of the candy, Phil. Um, so I support it. Anyone else have any questions? I'm right behind them. I'm on, on the floor, still in place, and we can definitely use somebody who wants to go appropriate. You know, so I think it's a good thing. Let's get somebody there. Yeah. Anyone want to make motion? I'll make a motion. Good yeah. point. For uh, changing the occupancy from three apartments and start to four apartments. Anyone second the motion? A second. Motion on the floor by Phil to uh, change the legal occupancy at 90, 92 under 5 for three apartments and store to four apartments. And second by, by uh, Maya. 
All in favor? Unanimous, 9-8-0, Tony B. Thank you, guys.